Hello, my name is Bob Dockery, Regional Safety Manager at Ward Trucking. In this video, we're going to go over how to pre-trip a non-CDL straight truck and a Class B straight truck. So before we take our vehicles out on the highway, the first thing we need to make sure is that they are safe to take out on the road. And we do that by doing a proper pre-trip inspection. Um, when we do a pre-trip inspection, the first thing we want to make sure is that our clearance lights are working properly. We have five clearance lights across the top of the vehicle, and they should be amber in color. Uh, coming down, we want to look at our windshield, make sure our windshield is properly seated, there's no cracks in our windshield, and our inspection sticker is up to date. We want to make sure that our hood is properly mounted, that our straps on the side are connected and that the hood is down. There's a strap on either side of the hood. The grill's contact, there's no missing grill pieces, and our bumper is solid. Want to check, make sure our headlights are working. We get in, also flick on our high beams, make sure our high beams are working, and that our turn signals and hazards are working as well. So the other thing we want to make sure before we go out is that there's no leaks uh, underneath the oil uh, or any other fluid is leaking from the engine and that there's no leans. A lean would mean that we could have a shifted load, we could have a flat tire, or maybe a problem with the suspension. So it's important that we check our vehicle out, make sure it's not leaning either side, and once again, make sure that there's no oil leak underneath. So after we've checked the front and made sure our lights are working and, and everything's secure on the outside, we're gonna open the hood and we're gonna make sure that our, our radiator reservoir is at the proper operating level, that our air filter is properly mounted secure, that our alternator is mounted and that the belt that works around the alternator has proper tension and that it's not decaying or any rot on our belt. Our turbo is tucked in behind the air filter. We want to look at that and make sure that there's no soot coming from the turbo which would indicate that there's loose bolts on it. Our fan blade is, is uh, are all there and the fan is, is properly mounted and that our radiator is, is mounted and secure and that there's no leaks coming from our radiator. Our washer reservoir has the proper amount of fluid so we can go out with it that day and that our frame is properly mounted, that there's no holes or illegal drills in our frame. That would conclude this side of the engine. Okay, so once we get to this side of the engine on the driver's side, the first thing we want to do is pull our oil dipstick out. We want to clean it, wipe it off, and then reinsert it. After we pull it back out, that's going to give us the proper oil level and we're right where we want to be. So we know our oil is good. So after we're done checking our oil, we just want to give a general overview of the engine, make sure that there's no exposed wires, no audible air leaks coming from our air harness. We want to make sure our power steering fluid reservoir is at the proper operating level. The fuel filter needs to get changed once the, the fuel gets up above this level here, which is in good condition. Uh, check our frame, make sure there's no illegal holes or illegal wells on our frame. Check our, our steer box or gear box, it could be called. Our pitman arm, our drag link, our control arm, all properly mounted and secured together with castle nuts and cotter pins. Make sure that our airline going to the brake chamber has no chafe or no uh, audible air leaks in it. Uh, same thing with our brake chamber, make sure that there's no audible air leaks coming from that. Make sure that our slack adjuster is, is properly mounted and secured, that there's proper tension coming out of the brake chamber. We also want to make sure that our leaf spring is properly connected to our axle with two U-bolts and, and four nuts on either side, and that our steer axle is behind the um, our front axle there, and the uh, tie rod is connected across from, from one control arm to the other control arm on the tire. We want to look at our tire tread depth, tread depth here and make sure that we have enough tread depth. On the front tires, we need to have no less than 430 second tread depth. You also want to make sure the inside of the tire and the outside of the tire don't have any abrasions, any uh, any bulges on the tire that it's seated to the rim. The tires have to have 100 PSI. Make sure that our, our mirror is properly mounted secured, that our mirrors are clean, they're not cracked. Make sure the door works properly, that your grab hand is secure to the trailer, that your steps 
are secure. You want to make sure your fuel cap has a safety chain and that there's an O-ring in there. The O-ring secures that once it's tightened, you don't have any fuel leak coming out. Same thing with your DEF tank. You want to make sure your DEF tank has a strap and that it closes properly so that when you put your DEF fluid in, there's no uh, leaking coming out or, or any possibility that it leaks. You want to check the box. Make sure your box is properly mounted to the frame. Once again, you want to make sure your clearance light's working. It should be amber. So when we're checking our, our tires, we want to make sure that they do have 100 PSI in them, that the uh, tread depth is good. We cannot have any less than 430 seconds of uh, material on our tires. But you want to check every lug nut, make sure they're tight. You want to look for rust streaks. If there's rust streaks coming from your lug nuts, that means they're loose. Make sure the tire is seated to the rim properly. You want to make sure that you have a metal valve stem and a metal cap on your valve stem. So you want to check, make sure that you have uh, your DOT tape running down the, the bottom side of the box here. You want to check the side of the box, make sure there's no holes, there's no missing rivets on the side of your box. So we want to make sure that the truck on the front, the rear, and both sides has the placard holders. You want to make sure that they're secure and that all four clips, or only empty ones, all five clips are in place. All right, so here's our air tag on the rear. We want to make sure that our air tag is properly mounted, secured, and that there's no audible air leak coming from our air tag. It's also important to make sure that these U-bolts are properly mounted and secured. These hold the box to the frame of the truck. They go about every four feet down the frame of this truck. So you want to make sure that they're all secure so that there's no looseness in them. And uh, if there would, you would see rust streaks. This is a newer truck, you're not going to see it. But on the older trucks, you'll see rust on the frame. And that's going to indicate that they're moving, which means they need to be tightened. After we check that, we want to make sure that our, our drive shaft is properly mount secured and that the U joints, the universal joints, are properly mount secured and uh, there's no looseness in them. Okay, so when we get to our drive tires, we want to make sure that they have the proper tread depth. Now the tread depth on the back has to be at least 230 seconds, whereas remember on the front it was 430 seconds. You want to make sure that the blood spacing, the space between these two tires, there's no debris or obstructions, okay, so this is clear of it. Once again, these both of these tires have to be 100 PSI. And that brings us to our, our uh, leaf spring here. You want to make sure that the leaf spring is properly mounted. There's no scissoring and that the mount is secure. Right on the inside there, you have your brake chamber. You want to make sure your brake chamber is secure and look at the lines going into the chamber. Make sure that there's no abrasions, no bumps, no cuts on your air hoses. And also listen to make sure that there's no any audible air leaks. Alright, so we're on, on the passenger side of the vehicle. We're going to check these tires out on this side of the vehicle the same way we check the other side. Make sure the DOT tape's there. Make sure all the rivets are in place. We have our placards, our placard clips, that our tires have the proper tread depth. All the lug nuts are there. The um, metal stem, metal cap is in place. Same way we would check out the other side. We want to make sure that we have our marking lights in the back. We have our five marking lights. They should be red in color. They should be all on and working properly. You want to make sure that you have your cables to your doors. Proper tension. These cables shouldn't be frayed. At the top of your door you have your DOT tape. It's in an L shape. That has to be there. You want to come down and make sure that your door works properly. It opens and it closes. And when you open up, you want to look inside, make sure that you don't have any holes in your ceiling, any holes on your floor, or any holes in the wall. Close it. Make sure that the latch works properly. You should have DOT tape 100% across the bottom of your door. You also should have DOT tape across the bar, your lift gate. Because we have a lift gate, we don't have an ICC bumper, so it's important to have the, the DOT tape across this bar here on the lift gate. You also want to make sure that the lift gate works properly.
Now that it folds out and folds back in. You have your tail lights, red in color. These are also your brake lights. And on the inside of your tail light here, if you zoom in real close, this would be your reverse light. And you would need somebody to help check them because you would have to put the truck in reverse. So you would need aid to check this and also your brake lights. You also want to make sure that your mud flap is properly secured and that it's at least no further than six inches from the ground. Okay, so we also want to make sure that our airbags from the rear are properly mounted, secured, and there are no audible air leaks coming from them. They're full right now. If they weren't full, or if you're having a problem with them, they will look crinkled and, and shortened. The frame would be down. So that would be a sign that you have an air leak and they're not filling up properly. So we're around the passenger side of the vehicle now, and we would check this side of the box and the tires the same way we check the other side out. And now we're looking at our muffler. We want to make sure that our muffler is properly mounted, secured, that it's not loose. And you want to look for any soot around the connections on the rear, in the middle, and in the front. If you see any black soot, that's an indicator that it, there's looseness and that it's leaking. And you do not want to be sitting over a uh, leaking muffler. That means all that carbon monoxide is coming right up into the cab. Okay, so after we've inspected the outside of the vehicle and we ensured that it's good to go on the road, we still have a couple more things to check before we can actually take it out. And the first thing is to make sure that we have an up-to-date registration. And when you're driving these straight trucks, it's important to know what the gross vehicle weight is. On this one, it's less than 26,001 pounds, which means this truck is a non-CDL truck. If it was weighted for 31,000 or 33,000 pounds, that's a Class B truck in which no non-CDL driver can drive this truck. This registration is up to date. The next piece of information we need to have is our insurance. Our insurance card is up to date. We have two hazmat certificates, a federal hazmat certificate and our West Virginia hazmat certificate and then our spotted land and fly certificate. We have all five documents, which means we are good to go with that. The next, we need to make sure that we have our 2020 ERG book and our Red Hazards material book. They are often kept on the driver uh, side pocket or above in the overhead. This truck doesn't have an overhead, so we're going to keep them in the side pocket of the driver's door. So we want to make sure that we have our post-accident drug kits. This is our non-CDL post-accident drug kit. It's in a red vinyl bag. We also want to make sure that we have our, our post-accident CDL drug kits and they are the green bag. So non-CDL is red, CDL is green. This is our spill kit. We want to make sure every track, straight truck and tractor trailer has a spill kit in it. And then this red box here contains our three emergency triangles. Don't just look at the box. You always want to make sure that you lift the box up and make sure that you have your three triangles. Every now and then one will break and a driver will leave it out on the road. So it's important to lift the lid and make sure that you do have your three triangles in there. You also want to make sure that you have your fire extinguisher. It should be a 10 BC fire extinguisher and it should be fully charged. So our arrow is in the green, which means this fire extinguisher is good and up to date. All these straight trucks have DEF and our DEF tank they have regens and a parked regen and it's important to know how to do a parked regen. The, the truck will alert you uh, that you have to do a parked regen and it's important that you listen to the truck and don't bypass it. The more you bypass it, the more you have to wait when you actually do that parked regen. The longer you wait, the more money it costs, the more the truck's down. So this is our parked regen button. Um, you're going to get alerts. It'll come up on the dashboard. Um, just like that little cloud symbol that you have to do a parked regen. It's important to do a parked regen because the truck is going to burn off the filter. It runs at a high speed or, or a high idle while you're parked to burn the filter out. When you do it, when scheduled, it should only take 20 minutes, half an hour tops. If you bypass it when you're supposed to do it, it's going to take longer, 45 minutes up to two hours. If it's not done at all, it will cause the truck to be 
uh, have to be pulled out, which takes two hours to take it apart, has to go to the dealer, two or three days to the dealer, and then another two or three hours to put the park back on. You could lose the truck up to a week. So it's really important when you get told by the truck to do the park regen that you pull over, notify your dispatcher that you're doing a park regen, and you should be only out for about 20 minutes to a half an hour. Before we go out on the highway, we also want to make sure we know the height of our vehicle. Our straight truck here is 12.6 and it's 102 inches wide. All of our straight trucks are going to have this sticker as a reminder so you know your height before leaving the service center. Here's our registration for a non-CDL straight truck. The reason why I know it's a non-CDL straight truck is because our gross volume weight is less than 26,001 pound, which means a non-CDL straight truck can haul no more than 9,000 pounds of freight. Non-CDL straight truck, no more than 9,000 pounds of freight. Okay? Here's a registration for a Class B straight truck. Our Class B straight truck, is gross vehicle weight is 33,000 pounds. Our Class B straight trucks are rated to haul 16,000 pounds. You can put 16,000 pounds on our Class B CDL trucks. You look at your gross uh, vehicle weight, your GVWT, it's 33,000 pounds. So the monitor up above is all in all of our new straight trucks. This is the reverse camera. Uh, this is an assist. When you're backing up, this is not your primary mode to look through. This is primarily just an assist. You're to use your rear view mirrors, your uh, spot mirrors to help you go backwards. This is merely assist. I'm sure most of us have vehicles that have the backup camera. Once again, this is not to back you up all the way to the dock, but merely an aid to help you see if anything's behind you. Please don't use this the whole way to back up. So before you go out on the road, you want to do a brake check. How you do a brake check in, in one of these straight trucks, whether it be a CDL, Class B, or a non-CDL straight truck, you want to charge your air up, which I have already done to save some time. You want to turn your ignition to the all position. It's going to cycle through. You want to push your parking brake in and leave the truck in neutral, okay? We have the tires chocked so that the truck doesn't roll anywhere. You're going to sit here and see if you lose any more than 4 PSI in a minute. Now, we're not going to wait the whole minute. As everything cycles through, we're not losing more than 4 PSI in a minute. I'm looking at both my primary and secondary air gauges. After we uh, do that brake check, we're going to apply our foot to the brake and we're listening to see if we hear any air leaks or we lose any pressure. We shouldn't lose more than 4 PSI with our foot applied to the brake pedal. We're not losing any air pressure. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pump down. We're going to pump our brakes all the way down. That set off our brake light alarm and our audio alarm. That should come on between 40 and 60 PSI. That gives us a warning that our brakes are running low. The last thing we want to do is pump all the way down to ensure that our emergency brake system is working. When it gets down to 20 PSI, our yellow buzzer should pop out. Our buzzer popped out at right around 30 PSI. Everything's working properly. Our brake system's working in good order. Looks like this vehicle is ready to go out on the highway.